Hi everyone, let's try this again. And hopefully we won't have any wireless wi Wi-Fi connection issues this time around. My name is Eva, I'm the owner and founder of My Sleeping Baby, and today's Friday, so happy Friday everyone. Hope you're having an amazing week. I am finally feeling better at getting over the worst cold in the history of mankind, so thankfully everyone is feeling a lot better around here. Now it is time to get to our much anticipated Friday focus question. So today's question is from Alicia. Her question is, hi girls, I'm absolutely losing my mind. My son is five months old next week. We just started solids once a day. He generally wakes between 6.30 and 7. Nap one is always in the car. It's usually from 8 a.m. and I wake him up at 10. Nap two is 12.15 to 2.15 or 12.30 to 2.30. Nap three is hit and miss, but if it happens, it's around 10 minutes, around 4.45, and then he goes to bed for 6.30. He self-settles for naps when he goes to bed, what, for naps when he goes to bed. Apart from a couple good nights where he only woke twice, he generally wakes around 10, 1, 3, and 5.30. Help, what am I doing wrong? All right, here's the, so this is a perfect example of where, of, of proves my point perfectly, that sleep training is not the be all and end all. In that sleep training does not address every single sleep problem out there because it doesn't cause every single sleep problem out there. You see, sleep training only addresses one potential sleep problem, and that is your baby's inability to fall asleep unassisted. So if you have a baby that's waking up because he needs help falling back to sleep, that's where sleep training is going to come in. Here though, this baby does fall asleep on his own. And assuming he's doing 100% of the work falling asleep on his own, and yet he's still waking four times a night, this is a perfect example of where we need to look at what else is going on and what else could be causing these night wakings. And I'll tell you off the bat that one of the sleep foundations that appears to need some tweaking is the scheduling. This is, there's no doubt in my mind that the schedule is a huge part of the problem and that he's overtired. Why? Alicia, you said it perfectly here. Nap three is hit and miss, but if it happens, it's 10 minutes around 4.45. This 10 minute long nap, Third, third nap. The fact that it's only 10 minutes long, I think is killing you here. And the pro, cause you see, let's see if it's hit, if you get a 10 minute long nap, 10 minutes is not long enough for any kind of nap to be restorative. And so it might just take the edge off things really. But for our purposes, it's as if he's awake from 2.30 all the way until 6.30 without sleeping. And let's say it's a miss. That means he's literally awake from 2.30 all the way until 6.30, which is far too long for a five month old. I mean, right now, until that third nap, the wake windows appear to be really perfect. He's, you know, he's sleeping every two hours or so. So we need to assume that he can't be awake for longer than two hours before bedtime. And yet he's awake for about four hours before bedtime. So what we need to be doing is we need to be eliminating this extremely large amount of overtiredness that's likely contributing to a lot of what's going on here at night. I mean, look, it's very normal for a five month old to wake up once, maybe twice a night to eat, but that's the most that they normally need to be waking, assuming everything else is perfect and assuming the baby is healthy. So with that in mind, I would suggest making some tweaks to his schedule so that you can get yourself a solid third nap, which for our purposes only needs to be about 30 or 45 minutes. It doesn't need to be significantly longer than that, but 10 minutes for our purposes just isn't good enough. So what might be happening, there's a couple of things happening here. What might be happening, first of all, is that those first two naps are two hours a piece, which is awesome, but it might be almost too much of a good thing, where because he's napped so much in the early part of the day, there just isn't enough sleep pressure for him to go back down to sleep again. And that's gonna be a problem because as we've established, he ends up being awake for four hours before bedtime. And that can individually wreak havoc on nighttime sleep. So you might wanna cut back on the duration of maybe even the afternoon nap for starters so that you can still squeeze in a proper solid third nap and avoid overtiredness. The other thing I wanna mention about the third nap is that this nap does not need to be happening in the crib. A lot of babies just can't pull off 
a solid third nap in the crib because there isn't enough sleep pressure even with the first two naps capped. So if he will nap 45 minutes in a swing, in a bouncy chair, in the stroller, in the car seat, in your arms, I'll take it. It's all fine. He's not going to need this third nap in the long run anyways. He'll likely drop it anywhere between seven and nine months. So if he needs, if he needs this, this third nap, which he clearly does because he can't be awake for, for four hours, just do what you need to do to make sure that he actually sleeps for that 30 or 45 minute period. Leah, to answer your question, what's an ideal nap length for the first two naps of the day for a baby in this age range, you definitely want those naps to be at least an hour a piece for this third nap as long as it's 30 or 45 minutes you're good to go you're accomplishing your goal it's at least somewhat restorative and baby won't be overtired and so let's say that you were to wake him up let's give an example if you were to wake him up from his second nap at say two o'clock and then get in a third nap from say four four like let's say four fifteen until five and then you get him down for the night at seven o'clock I think that's gonna end up being a really significant scheduling change and at least this way, if you're still dealing with unnecessary night wakings, you can deal with them head on via sleep training and not have to worry about overtiredness being an underlying issue here. It's, it's kind of like this. It's like if you're trying to teach a child how to swim independently for the very first time and you're taking their water wings off and then you turn off the heater and you make the pool freezing good luck to you trying to get your little one to actually swim properly, right? So it goes without saying that before you try teaching the skill head on, you got to make sure the foundations are, are in place. Is the water warm? Do you have a good teacher? Are there lots of toys to play with? And then you can try teaching that skill head on. So perfecting the daytime schedule is like warming up the pool. You got to do it first. You got to eliminate overtiredness from the equation. Hopefully some of these night wakings will go away on their own just by making these changes. And then if they don't, then you pick a sleep training method of your choice that you're most comfortable with. And, you know, you execute it and remain consistent. And then at least you know that it'll actually work and that it won't just be all for nothing. So this is a really perfect example of what I mean when I talk about the need to perfect the sleep foundations and the sleep science. Is the baby overtired? Is the baby getting good now? again, avoid overtiredness. This is all crucial. And I delve into this in so much more detail in my sleep Bible program. So for those of you who are still struggling with your little one's sleep and you need much more of this advice and you really need to know every, you want to know everything that you need to know to really understand sleep foundation.